Hey everyone, welcome back to Retro Reviews, and this week I'm going to be taking a look at Nintendo's handheld console, the Nintendo Game Boy. Now back in 1985, you couldn't exactly just take your 8-bit home NES console, stick it in your backpack, roll up a big cord of extension cable, carry along a TV, hop on your bike or on the school bus to enjoy some of your favorite games on the go. So what to do? In 1989, Nintendo released the Nintendo Game Boy, with a lot of popular titles ported over to a more compact handheld system. Now, there were a lot of other early handheld systems released in the late 80s and early 90s that, during the console wars of Genesis and Nintendo, decided to battle it out on the handheld platform. Okay, so we're going to take a look at the Nintendo Game Boy, originally released by Nintendo in 1989. And I have a few of my favorite games here. I have Solar Striker, Great Space Shoot'em Up, and Super Mario Land 2. Now the Nintendo Game Boy comes with a fully functional four-way D-pad, staggered B and A and select start buttons. It has a monorail speaker and also a headphone jack for built-in digital sound, a contrast adjustment wheel, and a port for connecting an AC adapter. There's a volume control wheel and a port for hooking up a D-Link cable, which you can compete against other people who have a Game Boy. You have the on-off switch and cartridge slot. And there's uh, the Game Boy is powered by four AA alkaline batteries. So the first game I'm going to take out and play here is Solar Striker. And as you can see, the Game Boy games look very much like regular NES cartridges except they're a lot smaller so they're really neat they're identical they're just really really small um, so the Game Boy originally released in 1989 was huge as far as changing the world uh, of handheld gaming as we know it um, before this point in time game and watches were the primary handheld games as well as little red light dot handhelds made by Mattel, uh, Microvision, and Tiger Electronics. Um, even though this only had a monochrome screen, the games licensed by Nintendo were so great that the Game Boy overcame its competitors like the Sega Game Gear, Atari Lynx, and PC Duo Express by TurboGrafx. Okay, so let's take a look at the Nintendo Game Boy in comparison to two of its major competitors. Here we have the Atari Lynx, uh, made by Atari, and the Sega Game Gear, made by Sega. Now these handhelds really battled it out during the 1990s for domination over the newly emerging handheld market, but it was the Game Boy who eventually would come out victorious. Uh, even with its monochrome screen, its small compact size made its on-the-go portability and fun uh, a household name for on-the-go uh, platforming. The Atari Lynx and the Sega Game Gear were devourers of batteries, um, each of them requiring six AA batteries each and barely getting two to three hours of playtime with them. The Game Boy only took four and lasted almost six hours. The library on the Game Boy was much better and very well compared to the NES. Looking to take your consoles on the go? Well, you won't be going anywhere anytime soon with the Atari Lynx. This thing won't even fit in your pocket. The Sega Game Gear? Well, fares a little bit better. Almost makes it in, but still really, really huge. Now, the Nintendo Game Boy, this micro-sized little powerhouse fits nicely in your pocket and you're ready to roll. Awesome. So in conclusion, if you're in the market for a portable handheld gaming console, I would definitely recommend an original Nintendo Game Boy or the Game Boy SP. The SP is backlit and can play the Game Boy Advance library as well as the original Game Boy library. Both are very extensive and have lots of classic titles that I'm sure you'll have hours of fun with. 
They're really cheap and easy to come by, and you'll get many years of enjoyment out of both. Mm -hmm.